Namakwaland daisies might be blooming themselves into extinction. A new study looking at uh, over eight decades of data shows the flowering season creeping earlier and earlier over the decades due to climate change. A shorter dormant phase means the flowers grow less resilient over time, which could have huge socio-economic and ecological impacts. Professor Jennifer Fitchett co-authored the study, having previously done a similar assessment of the Pretoria jacarandas. She's on the line with us now. Uh, Professor, thank you so much for your time. Uh, maybe unpack for us a bit more exactly how the phenology of these plants is changing and what that means for that belt of towns up the west coast. Sure. So this is something that is being experienced, as you've mentioned already, at, across different areas of South Africa, but also globally, as a response to climate change. And indeed, it's one of the most biologically sensitive responses to climate change. And one of the things that we can most clearly see as humans, we can't easily feel the 1.1 degree increase in temperatures that's been experienced over the past century. But we are able to see that our jacarandas are flowering earlier and that our Namakaland daisies are flowering earlier. And this is because each plant and each animal will have its own intrinsic senses of what constitutes the shift from winter into spring and therefore the shift from dormancy into the beginning of the growing season. And for some plants and animals, that might be the onset of rainfall. For others, it might be a certain accumulation of a total amount of rainfall. But for many, it's about the change in temperatures as we move towards the spring months. And if for a particular plant, uh, let's say as an example, the temperature of 20 degrees is the threshold that would signal that we've moved into spring. If we're now experiencing temperatures of 20 degrees during our late winter months of July and early August, that would then mean that for that plant, spring is occurring in July and early August. And that's why these flowers are appearing much earlier than they used to in the past. How does that affect the survival of these flowers? So in the short term, it is a very good adaptationary response from an, a plant or an animal because it's being able to then respond to a changing environment and to make the most of the resources available. But in the long run, it cannot continue to advance in its flowering date indefinitely. It starts to come under greater threat of frost. And even in a warming climate, we do still experience frost events throughout winter. And those are controlled by slightly different synoptic factors. So you can have overall warming conditions, but still those isolated frost events, and that would wipe out the flowers in a particular season and it, um, have a huge impact in terms of the capacity to develop seeds. But we also then have a concern in terms of how short we are making the dormant period. And although it doesn't seem like plants are doing very much when they're in their dormant period, they are actually um, accumulating resources during that time. And if we shrink that too much, uh, the ability of a plant to have enough energy to make it through that growing season is, is in, um, inhibited. And of course, it affects those towns because this is a big tourist attraction up the West Coast. Yes, absolutely. And um, there's not a huge amount of um, attractions in that area. It is a very uh, drought prone area and there aren't many different types of, of tourist attractions. So the flowers are really important for that region. And as those flowering dates advance, firstly, they're not occurring when they used to. So if you were planning to go and see the flowers in late August, early September, you're likely to have missed them. But as they advance, they're also becoming more and more unpredictable in their dates. And that makes it really challenging for a tourist to know when to go to the area. But more importantly, it's difficult for that tourism sector to continue to attract people regularly and to be able to advertise when that flowering season is likely to happen. All right. Will the, will the change in timing of these biological uh, events for the Namakoland daisy have any effect on the ecosystem as a whole? Yes, absolutely. And it's one of the big concerns. Um, firstly, in terms of the strength of those plants themselves, many of them are endemic to the Namakoland region and to South Africa. And so if they are put under threat as a result of the shifts um, from climate change, we may lose out on some of those flowers that we don't have anywhere else. But then a second concern is that every plant and animal has a slightly different set of triggers for what constitutes spring and therefore are advancing in their phenological events at a slightly different rate. 
And that means that the longer this takes place, the greater the chance of a species mismatch, where, for example, uh, insects, bees, butterflies, um, as well as some of our birds that are reliant on the flowers will appear earlier uh, than the flowers or later than the flowers and therefore lose out on their food source. And that really is a huge concern for biodiversity. Yeah, when people hear the word biodiversity, Prof, they almost switch off because they feel like, well, it's got really nothing to do with them. But how does the loss of biodiversity affect you and I, the man on the street? So I think the, the biggest thing we need to be worried about for our survival is agriculture and the ability for us to be able to grow plants um, that are producing food effectively. And of course, that relies on things like cross-pollination taking place from our bees. And so biodiversity, uh, as you say, a very large term and people switch off, but it really means the survival of our whole food chain. And, and we certainly are part of that food chain. But it's also important for us if we want to have an environment for our children to enjoy that something that is as much of a natural spectacle as the Namakulan daisies is around for our children and our great-grandchildren to be able to see and to be able to enjoy and that the landscapes that those form part of don't become barren deserts or, or areas that are really not of any interest um, for us to visit and are not capable of supporting the kinds of plants and animals that make our country very special and make our natural landscape very special. All right, Prof, thank you so much for your time. We appreciate it. Professor Jennifer Fitchett of the Witt School of Environmental Studies.